Hey Internet, it's RJ. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning into the show today. Now it is Sunday. That means it's time to go around the net with all the news you can use in the week that was in credit and finance. On today's show, I have some great stories for you. Discover is out super early with their uh, 2022 5X back categories. If you don't know what to get your family for Christmas, Marriott may have you covered in some statuses. Chase is dumping Expedia again. And then we have some final updates on that Bank of America preferred rewards changes that we've been following. So if any of that sounds interesting, and you then go ahead press the subscribe button let's get to work now first things first the biggest story of the week was the release of the capital one venture x card and in typical fashion i have you covered with a full video dedicated to that as well as some more news on the venture lounges as well as capital one's lounges they're opening in dfw to start so that'll be linked down below if you are interested go take a look um i, I think it was a really strong offering by capital one believe it or not so definitely take a look about that well, with that said, the shameless plug aside, let's get into the news stories. And our first story is Discover. Now, Discover it has the Discover has the Discover It Cash card, which is just like the Freedom Freedom Flex with the rotating 5x categories, up to $1,500 in spending combined purchases per quarter. Now, the difference is Discover. If you're new here, Discover releases their calendar all at one time, is where Chase just releases a quarter at a time. But they've actually released it at the start of November, so you can start planning early. So let's take a look at the categories that we have for 2022 for Discover. So here we have it, January through March of Q1, you're gonna have grocery stores and fitness club and gym memberships. April through June, Q2, you're gonna have gas stations and Target. July and September, you're gonna get restaurants and PayPal. And then October through December to wrap up 2022, you get amazon.com and digital wallets. And so there we have it, those are the 2022 categories. Now overall, Nothing super surprising. I think Discover usually does a good job with these. Um, I like all of them. I think all of them can be used between the two options, which is great. Now, you know, I, we like to build strategies here. Unfortunately, we won't know about any overlap until I think mid-December is when Chase will come out with their categories for Q1 of next year. But anyways, let me know what you think about those down below or are you hoping to see that you didn't get and vice versa. But with that and Discover aside, now we move into the next story, which is Marriott helping you pick your Christmas gift for your family members. So in an interesting turn of events, Marriott has said that if you have ambassador elite status, you can actually gift platinum status to a family member. So let's take a look at this now. So what I'm calling a Marriott Gifts, Ambassador Elite members can give platinum status to one family member. So the rules here, you must achieve ambassador status by the end of 2021 this year. Now normally that's going to take you $20,000 in spend plus 100 elite nights. However, the spend category has been lowered for 2021 to 14000 Dollars. Now, what do you get for platinum status? Well, this is where Marriott gets good. Um, gold is the one that like you normally see. Gold's not that hard to earn, but you don't get a lot with gold. With platinum, that's when you get the free breakfast, you get late checkouts, you get their lounge access, and you can get room upgrades when eligible. So overall, if you're going to get one of the statuses and be stick with Marriott, platinum's pretty good. And the fact that you can be a master elite and then gift it to someone else in your family. Now, I don't know how super literal they're taking family. It might just be you got to gift it to someone you know, friend, family member, coworker. I don't know how they're validating that, but I'm not a master elite, so I don't have to worry about it. But if any of you are a master elite, want to give me a shout out, let me know. But overall, I think it's a pretty cool perk. It's kind of similar to what we saw Hyatt do on the Chase Hyatt business card where you can gift status to like five um, co-workers. It's a business card, so like co-workers, but it can be anyone. So overall, not a bad move. And I do think that would constitute as a Christmas gift, in all honesty. If you came home for Christmas and you gave someone platinum status to Marriott Hotels, I think that would count as a gift. But you let me know what you think if someone gifted you platinum status. I would like it. But anyways, now we move on to Chase because we have to have a Chase story for the House of Diamond. You know how it goes. So now we're talking Chase and the travel portal. So you're probably very familiar but over the last, the last refresh of the Sapphire cards, Chase has really pushed you towards the travel portal. You get more multipliers when booking through the travel portal. The trifecta obviously boasts in the travel portal. The CSP getting 25% boost. Inc. preferred 25% boost in the Sapphire Reserve. 50% boost. Well, now we kind of see why. So let's take a look at this. 
So if you go back to 2018, Chase moved their travel portal to Expedia, which means it's a Chase sticker up front and then it, the back end is Expedia. It's got Expedia in the bottom right hand corner actually. Um, it's called like private labeling or white labeling something. It's not an uncommon practice. So in 2018, they moved it um, from CX Loyalty to Expedia. Now, wouldn't you know it, Chase bought CX Loyalty in 2020, and what CX Loyalty is, they're one of the biggest third-party card reward management companies. So some, some banks will partner with um, these companies, like Elan is one we've talked about when we did our Flagstar card reviews. And those companies manage the rewards programs for credit cards. If you ever see cards, they're like, wow, this card is very similar to other cards I've seen, just branded something different. It's probably managed by a third party company. So anyways, Chase went ahead and bought those guys and they do have a division that ran like their travel portal. I don't know how much they paid. It was an undisclosed amount. So now that Chase owns that portion of CX Loyalty, Chase is saying, okay, goodbye to Expedia, moving it back to CX Loyalty and kind of continuing this vertical integration strategy that we've seen. So again, if you put it all together, it makes sense. You pull in Expedia. Maybe this was always the plan. Expedia is kind of like a temporary placeholder, short-term contract, whatever. You make the acquisition you need. And then now it makes more sense why they're routing the Sapphire line back through their travel portal to get multipliers because now you're talking you get swipe fees you keep the points internal and then you also are getting whatever the cut is that the travel portal would take on the booking so overall you know i don't know that this is necessarily like a big deal i mean some people out there be like i loved expedia some people like the other one i don't even know if it, the front end is actually going to change um we'll have to see i checked mine earlier and it still said expedia i'll check again and if it says cx loyalty i'll put up another picture um here before i publish this with travel portals the thing to remember is you know, just still check the price between booking directly and the portal. Um, and I think you're good to go. Google Flights or something is still a good one to use. And that's going to make sure that, you know, you're still getting the fairest of prices. But overall, I think this should be fine. But of course, let me know your thoughts on that. Okay, and with the House of Diamond now satisfied, we move into what I have as our last story of the day. This is a story that's been pretty interesting that we've tracked over probably a few weeks now, and that is Bank of America changing their preferred rewards tiers and then also launching their uh, Visa Elite card, I think they call it as well. So, you know, we've had, it was been some rumors, and then, you know, friend of the channel, Sam, shout out to Sam, actually reached out and said, hey, I have been talking to some Bank of America folks. He's, he's a big deal in the Bank of America uh, system, trust me on this said hey it is going to happen and now we have some um, they're not necessarily linked leaked images but they are images posted from some of the material posted on flyer talk so we're going to take a look at these now because they give us insights to the new diamond status and the diamond plus status as well as who's actually eligible for this new bank of america visa elite card that we talked about in a previous show and i'll link that video down below if you want some more information on what the card is supposed to have so let's take a look so this is slide one of two that we're going to take a look at, and this has the statuses. So you've got gold, platinum, platinum honors, and the new ones are diamond and diamond honors. So you can see the first row here has the price requirement, the capital requirements. So now platinum honors caps out at one million. Previously, if you went to the slider on Bank of America's site, it capped out at two hundred fifty thousand. But if you had two hundred fifty thousand and one dollars, it didn't really change anything. So now Diamond and Diamond Honors, you can see $1 million and $10 million respectively. Now the interesting thing here is if you drop down on the Diamond and Diamond Honors row to that first check mark, you can see that they're not giving you any additional um, credit card multipliers or bonuses. It still caps out at 75%, but you can apply for the Premium Rewards Elite card at Diamond and Diamond Honors and you can see there it's going to give you that 75% credit card bonus. And then that card is launching November 23rd. So, so definitely press the subscribe button for that. Now, if you go down the rest of the way, you can kind of see here, Preferred Rewards is always given special pricing um, through the statuses. We don't talk about the rest of the special pricing as much because this is a credit card focused channel, but you can see there what you get. Now, if we flip over to the next one, this is preferred rewards comparison of tiers. So this is just probably a better, a more in-depth way to compare it. 
So again, um, the one that you'd be interested in is at the top. You can still see the 25, 15, 75 percent still tracks, and then you still cap out at 75 percent at diamond and diamond honors. And then you can kind of see the rest of the stuff you're going to get for being a diamond and diamond honors. It is an interesting move to make the the new incoming credit card only available to those folks. That I don't know. It seems kind of silly to me because it, there's nothing on that card that's special enough to be like oh so exclusive, right? This is to me very reminiscent of the J.P. Morgan Reserve card, where like it's this really cool looking card because you don't see. I've never seen one in person. Well, I've seen Graham Stephan has the video. I've seen that one, but I haven't seen one in person. But if you look at the card, it's basically a Sapphire Reserve wrapped in a different paint job, except you get um, United Club access. But I think it costs a little bit more the card and then they give it to like either it's private client or private bank members get it but like there's not there's not anything there it's not actually that special and i think this is one of those old adages of you know i work in detroit there's like a lot of automotive folks and i asked them one time you know there's a lot of features on cars on like maybe your Toyota Camry, your Ford Fusion, that's like just come standard, blind spot assist, things like that, um, Apple CarPlay. And then one year BMW tried to make Apple CarPlay like a paid feature, but they're just giving it away in other cars. And so I asked a guy, the auto executive, and he's like, well, you know, really people who come to like the BMW Mercedes lot, they never bother to look at what Toyota's offering. So yeah, we can probably get away with doing that. And I think this is the same thing here. I can say, hey, look, now it's beneficial to you to move over more of your capital to Bank of America, Merrill Lynch. Oh, by the way, I can give you this $550 annual fee card as well, but it's exclusive. I'm like, well, you know, I guess it's exclusive, sort of, but it's not really, again, it's not really worth a whole heck of a lot to me. Like for 10 million, for 10 million or a million, I think if it was an annual fee was waived or severely reduced, I think that would be fine. But overall, I like the changes to preferred rewards across the whole. You know, why not? It makes sense not to just cut off your higher net worth individuals at 250K, especially given the Merrill Lynch partnership or the ownership there. But everything else in the credit card space, I don't really see it. Um, so, but you guys let me know what you think. If you are huge into Bank of America's preferred reward system, are you going to go the extra mile to get this card? Or are you bummed out that you, it looks like at least right now, you can't get this card because it has a, a capital requirement of at least a million. I'm going to guess they probably end up changing that in about a year or so, but we'll see. But anyways, guys, if you like this one, drop me a thumbs up down below. If you found it particularly interesting, consider subscribing to the channel. Of course, posting content just like this every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Of course, right back here every Sunday with all the news you can use in the week that wasn't credit and finance. My question for you guys is, let me know your thoughts about the stories. Are you excited about the Discover categories? Will you gift me platinum status if you're an ambassador elite person? Um, shameless plug. And of course, the Bank of America story and whatever other stories you saw out there that we didn't cover, feel free to drop them down below. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this one. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you on Monday.